week has arrived. Bestow upon us the greatness of the sun and the weekend, which is traveling at us at hypersonic speed so we can enjoy ourselves and be gamer nerds for the entire weekend. God damn. It's all good, man. It's the best way of finishing the week is to get down here with you guys and play ourselves some drama to learn about the craziness that happens in the wild world of online gaming. And that's what we're going to do today. That's what we're going to do today. Damn right it is. It's been a ridiculously good week as again. Playing out Baldur's Gate 2. We had 9.1 dropping with us that new M plus affix. Gaining anima powers inside our dungeons. And we played an extraordinary game today where once again we're pretty much we unleash Cthulhu Daddy upon the world. All in a day's work. All in a day's work. I hope you've all had a great time. I hope you've all been good. And I hope you're ready to kick back and relax and have some fun. Mm, it's gonna be good yes yes indeed very cool game all in a day's work that's what it's all about here we're getting it all done i cut my hair for the first time my god you see a little gap you see it see my, see my gap i've got a gap look at that gap gap needs fixing and we'll need fixing we're gonna get it fixed it's gonna be good got your drinky drinky i'm on the water <sighs> on the water mm, got the gym later when i'm then gonna be babysitting for Four children under the age of nine. Uh, um, which is going to be the best. It's going to be the absolute best. I've got a whole family weekend planned, man. I've got, I'm have got. i seeing my mother for the first time in like a year and a half tomorrow. Ooh, looking forward to it, actually. Looking forward to it. I think it's the way to go. But we've got some great stories lined up for us today. All over the place, especially with that Burning Crusade launch. With many of you stepping through that dark portal for the first time properly. Not just on some leveling extravaganza, but to actually enjoy a wonderful wonderful launch by Blizzard. But we're going to kick off today with uh, Don't Trust Democracy. <laughs> don't Trust Democracy. Hmm... I'm sure it's going to be fine. I always put it in the name box. Why do I do that? I'm just so bad at my job. So, so bad. Let's put the names in there. Let's put Kremlin. Our wonderful website supporters. Thank you very, very much. Nubal. Nubal. Get you in there. Uh, we need a guild name for our wonderful live audience. A guild name would be perfect. Perfect. Jebster and Hansons. What do we got here? <laughs> the story, I am the seventh. No, we're not the boost, boosted crusade. Oh, no. Unleash the salt. Don't trust the democracy. Right, our guild name uh, will be the Tick Tick Titlickers. <laughs> what is wrong with you guys? <laughs> the Titlickers. <laughs> all right <laughs> well all right we're gonna go with considering we've got political real quick we'll go with the boosted crusaders we'll, we'll do that we'll go with the boosted crusaders <laughs> i got all left wing on me and right wing so quickly it was too much for me to handle on a friday and i don't want to deal with it so i'm not going to all right then today we are not going to trust democracy apparently i don't know what's going to happen we're along for this ride together my friends are we ready? Are we settled in? Are we relaxed? We're good. Mr. Preacher! One of my guildies recently introduced me to your channel. Hello. And more specifically, Driver Time, because he couldn't help but want to share the story of the sexy tank. Oh, a sexy tank. I was hooked. I agree. Because our guild is currently taking a break, waiting for the promised ever <laughs> the promised golden land of 9.1. Which I confess I am less than enthusiastic about since it involves more of the maw. Yes, it involves actually primarily the maw. <laughs> more than anything there's little else than the more actually thinking about it it's it's 90 95 percent the more uh, i have spent quite a bit of time listening to your old drama time stories i want to share a tale that i've told many times over the years and it always seems to entertain mm. oh we got bad uh bad twitch server fix yourself we had bad twitch server this morning looks fine now good stuff our story begins in vanilla we're going all the way back my fiancé had convinced me to try the game while it was in the beta. I didn't have much MMO experience before. A few months in Ultima Online, a little bit of dabbling in City of Heroes. City of Heroes was a quality game. I enjoyed playing that. But his persistence made me relent and give World of Warcraft a shot. We both ended up buying the game and staying up late at night on launch day to make our characters on a medium pop server. We enjoyed leveling for the most part. I hated how long it took to get a mount. But at some point, we were invited to a guild. At the time, we were just looking for a small community to chat with and maybe just do some dungeons. That's all. We stayed with this first guild through the rest of our leveling and our first dungeons. 
making several friends along the way. To be honest with you, I don't remember much about my first World of Warcraft guild, except the name and a few people whose names stuck out to me. Neither of us were in leadership positions, so I can't tell you what caused it, but there was a rift between the GM of this guild and most, if not all, of the other officers. The guild master didn't want to give up her guild leadership, but was in major disagreement about many things, including the raiding team that was just beginning to come together. Everyone that I remember ended up leaving that guild en masse to make a new guild under a slightly different name called the Boosted Crusaders. One of my many promises of this new guild was that there would be an improved guild structure and we would form, wait for it, a 40-man raiding team. My husband and I were warming to the idea of raiding and while we didn't really understand everything that was going on, all the people we made friends with were going to this new guild, so it was a no-brainer to go along as well. We didn't care too, mu too much about the propaganda they were peddling, and make no mistake, I have learned since that all the hype and excitement for a new guild is much more propaganda than truth. It always is. Always is. The brand new guild you're farming is literally like going to be walking across golden, the most golden sands you can imagine. Every new guild is just perfection. It is heaven's gate. It is you walk through and you're just in paradise. Oh, everyone's so friendly. And you know what? Every new guild will be drama-free. Every single one of them. Without question. That's why we're making it. The Boosted Crusaders was formed with great intentions. We were going to try and make a guild that was as democratic as possible. With a few exceptions. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> as I've always said, a guild is not a democracy. <laughs> A guild is not a democracy. <laughs> nope, there needs to be somebody who draws the line somewhere. The new, G the new GM, Kremlin, was a charismatic guy who was well-liked. Always hung out on TeamSpeak's chat. And who was a fantastic mediator when there were spats between players. Unlike class officers, which I'll discuss in a moment, he was chosen to be the guild master with the understanding that he could not be ousted, replaced, or vetoed out. So a dictator then is what you're describing, right? Why would you inst why would you instill this rule? I don't understand. <laughs> We're going to make the guild as democratic as possible. However, <laughs> our one true leader, the the golden god himself, cannot be removed under any circumstances. Okay, sure. Another exception was our raid leader Jebster. Who was the guildmaster's best friend. Oh, perfect. Yeah, there's no bias. Jebster was a man with a thick accent who to this day we still laugh about how he pronounced certain words. He genuinely tried to correct him. Oh, we genuinely tried to correct him. But he ignored our efforts and called groups, groups. Called paladins, paladins. And perhaps worst of all, called melee, Mali. Oh, that's unforgivable. Mali, Mali. Phonetic names never stood a chance against Jebster. <laughs> Marley. When a name was easy to pronounce, he would somehow, somehow find or search for another syllable and would become honestly frustrated when we would try to gently insist how easy it would be to not add extra letters to the words. Don't. Not while I'm doing drama, Isaac. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, don't do that. <clears throat> <laughs> so anyway, the democracy idea. Where the democracy idea came into play were, of course, the class officers. We had one for every class in our team. The druid, the mage, warlock, paladin, priest, warrior, hunter, and rogue. The class officers were voted for by their own class and elected by a majority vote. The process was facilitated by neutral third parties to prevent voter manipulation. <laughs> For class leaders, voter manipulation. The intention was that the class officers would represent and advocate for their class in officer discussions. If a class officer did not live up to the expectations of the class members, then there could be a vote of no confidence against that officer to have them removed from their officer position. And a new class officer could be voted in. I know this sounds rather ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> it does. But it is true. We thought this system was going to be great. You didn't have to be the best druid to be the druid class officer. 
You didn't all the best hunter to be the hunter class officer. You just had to be well liked. Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay. Well, there it is. You might think 10 officers was enough. Yeah, it's a quarter of the raid is officers. But it wasn't enough bureaucracy for the boosted crusaders. Okay, you see, the class officers weren't given any official duties. Something I still think about to this day. They didn't have to help their team members teach mechanics to their class. They didn't have to do any leadership. Honestly, no one wanted to. They didn't have to handle loot. All the jobs they had to do was to attend officer meetings when they were held so they could cast a vote on any issues that came up for discussion. Because of this, we had another officer who was the loot officer. Underneath the loot officer were regular guild members who volunteered to be on what we established as a loot committee. They would all help track DKP, would auction off loot and make sure it was handed off to the right person. Hilariously, and I'm serious for here, we also decided it would be good to prevent drama to have an HR officer. <laughs> be very wary, okay, of anybody who volunteers to be the HR officer of a WoW guild. Because that person is crazy. Like, really crazy. In a dark way. Not like in a funny way. Like in a really dark way. You don't want that in your life. You don't. The HR officer, similar to the loot officer, had assistants that were promoted as well. Oh, HR assistants. But to be part of human resources, you had to be nominated by others and approved before you could join. Guildies could go to human resources and make an official report anonymously against an officer, and human resources would investigate to try and resolve it, protecting the identity of the reporter so there could be no retaliation by the officer in question. Our <laughs> on our guild website, only the guild master, human resources officer, and the human resource members could view a private subsection of the forum where HR matters were discussed with absolute confidentiality. Truth be told... <clears throat> oh, no. I thought it was a good idea, and I volunteered and was on HR for some time. To this day, I don't know why I did this. <laughs> Maybe I just wanted the drama. I don't know, but I did it. <laughs> Guilty as fuck. <laughs> I later be was promoted to communications officer? What do they do? The job of the communications officer would be to help in general administrative duties... I was tasked with taking minutes and notes of every officer meeting... Post the official decisions made by the officership to our website. And I was also given the task of running little games for the guildies. And I put out a guild newsletter regularly. <laughs> I'm sure you in the chat will find it silly. No, 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 no. We're all on board. We think it's a really smart idea. But I really enjoyed doing it. And it seemed to improve morale since our large officership depended on class officers to explain everything to their class members previously. Once I became an officer, I had to officially resign from human resources as you couldn't hold two posts. But I became privy to the dark green text of official officer chat. Oh, wow. On the inside now. <clears throat> you make it so hard for me. I'm speaking from the heart now as Mike Lamp. Mike Lamp feels depressed for you. Okay? I do. I feel so depressed for you. <sighs> Here we go. There's something else you need to know about the Boosted Crusaders. We drew up an official code of conduct. Of course you did. The code of conduct outlined how members should conduct themselves. It went into excruciating detail about what behavior was unacceptable. Things went well for a time. We cleared Molten Core, despite Jebster having an obsession with Curse of Doom. For those who don't play vanilla and never did, mobs had a maximum amount of debuffs they could have on them at a time, and our glorious raid leader decided Curse of Doom was better than anything else. 
We slowly cleared our way through Blackwing Lair, and it seemed everything was fine until Nefarian. What hurts the most, and I mean this seriously, what hurts the most is your guild did better than the guild I was leading. That's what hurts me inside, like in here, is this guild did better than the guild I was leading. Now that cuts, it cuts fucking deep. It really does. It cuts fucking deep. <clears throat> Ash Candy! Ash Candy dropped. It was the first time I recall ever being actually worried about the raid team. I don't want to get into the debate over the weapon itself, but it was uh, a melee weapon that our hunters had been interested in because of the stats. No. No. Anybody want to roleplay with me? Can you guys say, can I have Ash Candy? Alright, I'm going to deal with this for you right now, okay? You guys say, can I have Ash Candy? And I'm going to say, no. <laughs> right? No. There you go. I dealt with it. No, you can't. You can have it after everybody else. <laughs> That's it. <clears throat> Several guild warriors wanted Ash Candy as well, shockingly. But a hunter ended up winning Ash Candy because our loot system was democratic and didn't give preference for warriors. Can you close the door, please, little James? Yeah, can you close the door and do the washing after, mate? I'm doing a show. Okay. Thank you. Ash Candy, because our loot system did not give preference. If you could use it, you were allowed to bid on it. Honestly, I don't think anyone anticipated the storm that it would become. Really? No one could see this coming. Not a single person. And now we've lost instead. Oh, come on. Work with me here, Twitch. But, but remember, let's catch you back up then. We're dealing with a guild who is not entirely sure that hunters getting Ash Candy over the warriors is going to cause a problem. <laughs> what a surprise. I'm shocked. <laughs> In our guild, following this moment of giving the ash candy to a hunter first, the warriors and the hunters in the guild began a cold war. One of the most sociable and active people in our guild was the paladin class leader, Nubal. Everyone in the guild had liked Nubal at first. She was friendly, would run dungeons with guildies, and was usually a pretty helpful person. But as nice as Nubal seemed at first, Nubal was a little odd. The decursive mod used to allow you to click a single button and instantly cleanse anyone in range. Nubal argued that she was faster than an automated system. <laughs> Behind her back, other healers joked about this and would prove her wrong, but she never acknowledged it. Another day, she got into a heated debate about how she was afraid of chicken, the meat, not the animal, and tried to argue that it was legitimately scary. Let's go back to our let's try and reimmerse ourselves, shall we? Let's go back to our paladin here, who is uh, a little odd, can cleanse faster than an automated. No, please. Heck of you. Ah, what are you doing to me, man? What are you doing to me? Nah, it's not little. She's burning, baby. Yeah, she's burning. She's dropping, she's dropping frames faster than I drop my wife when I've got slippery fingers. You know the situation. You've all been there. Has it stopped? Maybe? Yeah, it looks like it might be okay. Maybe? Saved? Uh, potentially. Potentially we're okay. It's actually we're okay. <clears throat> Looks like it. All right. If it does it again, we will just do it tomorrow night because uh, we can't have a story if we keep having to stop starting. That's just really annoying. That's like having someone chatting in your ear at the cinema. That's the nightmare. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go. Let's talk about this paladin then. The fastest decurse in the West is going on. Uh, <clears throat> but another day, she got into a heated debate about how she was afraid of chicken. You might recall, of course, the terrifying chicken lying on the side. But she also claimed that pork was not scary. And that's something that most people couldn't resolve. It's still possibly the most bizarre argument I've ever seen happen in the privacy of an officer chat. And to this day, I have not met one person that could begin to explain to me how chicken meat is terrifying. If someone has met this paladin, I truly believe they will know from this fact alone. Because there cannot be two people in this world who are scared of chicken. Regardless, I could, uh, I could live with how weird Nubal was. But Nubal wanted to become the guild master. Her opportunity to undermine Kremlin 
and to try and paint herself as the hero of the guild would become in the form of Hansons. Hansons was one of our teenage raid members and a hunter who claimed one night that he couldn't attend the raid because of his homework. Despite claiming he couldn't raid, he was online that very evening when we were farming up and sending out invites. One of the officers asked him what was going on. Why are you in Ironforge if you're supposed to be doing your homework, sir? He said that he was doing homework in between battleground queues. <laughs> to be a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> They'll believe me. Several of us, of course, doubted this story. We had been working on the Twin Emperors and wiping on it for weeks, so the fact that he was there for farming out for progress raised several eyebrows. I personally volunteered to keep an eye on where Hansen's was between trash and boss pulls once the raid started. As, as a member of HR, we thank you for your service to keep your peepers on him. Documentation was part of my guild job. And I was not the biggest fan of Hansen's, so fuck Hansen's. <laughs> Sure enough, every time I checked, he was in a battleground rather than Ironforge. Every single time. I shared this in officer chat, baffled that he didn't think he would get caught in his lie. Kremlin had had enough. He was tired of guild members skipping out on difficult progress nights and lying to us. Another teenage player, a druid, had sat out at raid night, I shit you not, playing around in Microsoft Office. It wasn't Hansen's first instance of skipping out or disappearing for harder bosses. In the heat of the moment, Kremlin did what most people would do if they were Guildmaster and made an example of Hansen's. The big boot came his way. Nubal was outraged. Both in officer chat and publicly, she called out Kremlin for kicking Hansen's. She did not dispute, of course, that he had broken the rules. Her stance was because the code of conduct, now you might remember it, that sweet, sweet code of conduct did not explicitly state that failing to show up for raids and lying to an officer was a kick-worthy event. That Kremlin lacked the authority to kick Hansons in this democracy. Nubel advocated that there must be a discussion and an agreement between the officers on what to do. Furthermore, we couldn't hold Hansons or anyone else accountable for doing something like lying until we amended the code of conduct to reflect lying to the officers and skipping out of raids of a kickable offense. As we had all agreed though, ladies and gentlemen, to live in this democ democratic utopia, Hansons was invited back to the, ghoul, the guild. Technically, he had not broken the rules. <laughs> the <g> okay now. <laughs> <laughs> the guild was deeply divided. Most people didn't really care about Hansen specifically, but now in guild chat, whispers and on our website, everyone seems to be arguing specifically about the problem of the code of conduct. At least half the guild, including myself, thought Nubal was absurd. Why would we ever need to put this in writing? It's clearly a kickable offence. Hunters rallied behind their hunter, and the warriors rallied against the hunters because of the Ashkandi situation. Nubal worked to convince everyone how Kremlin should not be the GM. And while she didn't explicitly state that she should be GM that I know of, there was an implication. Clunan refused to hand over the guild to Nubal. Her coup failed. Not enough people were on her side. For her to do anything except crow about what was done wrong and should have been done better. The announcement then of the Burning Crusade. 25 man raiding. Oh, that's a shame. We have to kick some people? Oh no. <laughs> Whoever will we choose? <laughs> We knew things couldn't continue as they were. One of our warriors posted a picture on the forums of a sinking Titanic with no caption. I laughed very, very hard. I sh it should be mentioned here that the website was not run by the GMR Nubal, but a guildie who had offered to do it, website officer, and he had never abused the trust put into him until he did. Disgusted with what he saw on the website, he decided to make all the forums on the website viewable and locked them to prevent replies. You son of a bitch. All the HR shit? Oh no. <laughs> he said he was going to do this for transparency in the democracy. And to allow us to begin the healing process as a guild. <laughs> Everyone could see the officer forums and read the dirty laundry aired there. Without context, some of it addressed issues from a year or more ago. The HR forums were now viewable by everyone, exposing a single druid for having made over half of all HR reports, much to the frustration of human resources. 
Her complaints were mostly feeling that people probably are doing something wrong, even if they weren't. Anything and everything that upset her, no matter how minor, had been reported on that forum. To give you an idea of what upset this particular druid, another druid had posted on the forums asking what stats his fellow druids had in their best tanking gear, assuming they were building a set for tanking in the future. Our human resources enthusiast druid objected, saying that only the druid class officer could request this sort of personal information. I'm done, man. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm so done. <laughs> You've drained everything from me at this point. <laughs> I have. You've drained it from me. Make no mistake. The original post in no way demanded that anybody reply. It was just a query about tanking stats. It was just a friendly question. In fact, the Druid class officer was the first person to reply with her gear stats and she said she didn't have any issues with people asking about stuff like that on the forum. Druid human resource problems aside, the guild was, of course, dead. There was immediate mass exodus from the forums. Uh, after the forums were unlocked and people felt betrayed, the website officer was surprised that this did not bring the healing process he hoped it would. <sighs> uh, we're all shocked. We're all taken aback. <laughs> Disillusioned. Disillusioned. Just sick and tired of the drama storm. I'm not sure that it took even a few hours for people to log on and quit. I never saw most of them ever again. Just enough of us were left, though, luckily, to form a 25-man raiding guild. Why would you still raid here? Why? What, what, what for? That became another shit show. Just as bad as the, the boosted crusaders. Really? Really? You took those same people into a different environment and they behaved the same way again? Unreal. I'm not sure what happened to Nubal. I parted ways with Kremlin as he sought out something better for his time zone. What I learned from the Booster Crusaders is that democracy in WoW sounds good in theory. It doesn't, no. And it's horrible in execution. Class officers were elected. They could jockey in politics to get their position. And the rest of us were powerless to remove them so long as they had the favor of several people. Democracy gave class officers an incentive to only be beholden to their class clique and to throw every single other officer under the bus when an unpopular decision was made. Nubal would divulge how different officers voted in private officer meetings. I wouldn't be surprised if others did too. We did not have a unified front except for each individual class team. Our wow democracy encouraged all the worst behavior. Despite the hard lessons learned, I still play with one of the priests I met in that guild over 15 years later. Unlike many wow couples, my then fiancé and I have been happily married since 2005. And I try not to notice how much better DPS he is than me. We can help you, okay? We can help you. One of the warlocks I met in, guild, in that guild played World of Warcraft with me for over 10 years and moved to our area. And we're still real-life friends to this day. Thank you for your time, Preacher. And if you choose to read this, and thank you for all the laughs. If my tale abuses you, I'm happy to send you more as I had even more bizarre adventures in the 15 years of playing WoW. Always. We are always looking forward to more stories. But uh, tell me you're a little bit... All I want to know... Right? All I really want to know is that you're no longer that naive <laughs> honestly that's all i'm hoping for if we get that then you know what i'm i'm pretty happy i really am <clears throat> what is this pex okay i'm cute you've grabbed my attention it's not world of warcraft but you've grabbed you grabbed my attention is there a pirate mmo and i don't know about it and I'm not talking about boat games, Sea of Thieves. There is a pirate MMO? Because that sounds really fun. <clears throat> yeah. This is from... Mike, this is from the game Tolopo. The Legend of Pirates Online. To the Google. The Legends... The Legend of Pirates Online. Is this a Facebook game or something? Am I going to look at, like, Hotel Habbo or something? What is this? Are we gaming? Are we going to be gamers? Uh, okay. It looks like an actual game. What? I've never heard of this. What the hell?
Is it is it dead? RuneScape for pirates. This. Peter McPain. You've played this? I have never heard of this game in my entire life. Not a single time. They have Jack Sparrow poggers. <laughs> this is a plug for this game? They're not paying me. I have never heard of this in my life. I kind of want to try it out. Is it still live? I'm kind of tempted. For our audio listeners, it doesn't look like one of your Flash games. It has 3D models. It has the whole business. Press shift to talk to Smuggling Sam. Oh, Baldur's Gate might have to go on a bat burner. <coughs> Brought to you by streaming. Out. Yeah, Baldur's Gate might have to take a break if we can be online pirates. Can we make a crew? Hey, an MMO is what you make of it. Yo ho. We'll, we'll be yo ho and finally quitting WoW to play Pirate Men. We can make a little crew. Oh my god. <laughs> We're all over it, team. We're all over it. Read the story first. Okay, is the story going to put me off? Fair enough. Okay, the story might put me off. Fair enough. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, preacher and chat. I've got a non wild drama story for you all today, but a drama story nonetheless. This took place recently on the rather niche MMO, The Legend of Pirates Online. Or Tolopo for short. Essentially, Tolopo is a fan remake of the original Pirates Online game developed by Disney as part of the Pirates of the Caribbean IP. Oh, I'm, I'm so down. I have always had fond memories of playing my pirate character as a kid, getting a ship, plundering the navy and undead ships and cutting down enemies with my cutlass. One day I found myself re-watching The Curse of the Black Pearl and remembered those times. I googled Pirates Online and found that it was miraculously being run on a private server completely for free. Oh, I bet I'm not allowed to stream it. So I decided to start playing. I found a video of someone playing Slopo for the first time. It's like RuneScape, but with pirates. Okay, so Bex has given us a link. So uh, I'll post this in the chat. Thank you, Bex, for doing some research. All right, there's some research. There's the video. We're not watching it during drama, but there's a video. When I played years ago, I had made a male character because I'm a guy and played playing as a female character would have been weird, right? <laughs> yeah. That's right. In all online games, every girl character you see is played by a girl. And every male character you see is played by a male. That's how it works, okay? Because we've all made some sort of offline pact. That that's what we're going to do, <laughs> right? I was 10 years old, don't judge. Anyway, I figured this time around I'd make a female character to see what all those piratey cosmetics would look like when they weren't being worn by a burly chested fella. I chose to really sink into the nostalgia and take the role play seriously by giving my character a realistic name rather than something goofy. Oh no. Jump forward a week then. At this point I found myself in a... Oh, we need a pirate guild name. I didn't see that. We need a pirate guild name. Like quick, quick sharp. We need a pirate guild name, all right? Yeah, we're, we're pirate RPing. This is this is sick. Isaac, you down or what? <laughs> Are you down? <clears throat> the swashbucklers, uh, semen stains. Yeah, we'll go with the semen stains. I like it. I found myself in a guild called the semen stains. The people there were nice and helped one another complete quests. I made a few friends and we all reminisced about the good old days. Pretty much everyone playing this game was an adult going after nostalgia since kids wouldn't be interested in playing an old MMO like this one. But now I should explain how leveling in this game works. You have notoriety level that goes from 1 to 50 and you gain experience by doing literally anything. Separately, you have weapon skill levels and sailing skill levels. You need these skill levels to unlock passives and new abilities for your weapons and boats. In order to sail a boat, which was my favorite part of the game, on bigger and better ships, you needed to level scaling, uh, sailing. This was quite the grind if you dove right into it, solely because you start with a tiny sloop. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm not a pirate. I'm from Manchester. A tiny sloop that fires off three to four shots and probably doesn't kill much. It's a little boat. Is it a schooner? <laughs> a schooner. The biggest ships players can own are war frigates and brigs. Dudes, we are in. We are so in. The PG war frigate? Yo ho! Those can fire off 20 to 25 shots at a time. I wanted to sail those ships. 
So I needed to level my sailing, and it was just taking too damn long. So I sought out another player to ask if I could level my sailing by using their ship to level boost. Min maxing. Most players either declined or didn't respond, because if I played poorly and either damaged or sank their ship, they'd have to pay to repair it, and there's no trading gold in this game. In comes Aegis, one of my guildies. I was about to give up when I found myself on his warship, and he outright offered to let me take the wheel. I was surprised, but he said he had inspected my character and saw my skill was so low that he figured he'd help me out. This was all his slash say, so the other three to four people on the ship firing cannons saw this and asked if they could sail as well, but he shot them down. He was pretty rude to them, but super kind to me. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't understand. It was kind of weird, but I figured I'd take the opportunity. We sailed a bit, and after taking too much fire from a Navy ship, we sank. <laughs> You sank the ship on your... That's, Jesus Christ. All the guildies aboard the ship were annoyed because we had lost all the loot. But Aegis told him to show up and asked if I wanted to go again. I was really befuddled but said, Of course, of course I want to sail this boat again. I couldn't figure out what prompted this kindness. I sunk the ship a second time. Don't worry about it. Offering to go out with his ship. I politely declined because I had to go to sleep. But I said, I can play again tomorrow. The next day I logged on and came to the realization as it all clicked in my head. Now this might sound strange, but it seemed that it was expected for most people playing female characters to also be female in real life. This sort of came about due to the nature of people recreating their old characters and back in 07 when we were all kiddos, boys would generally stick to boy characters and girls would stick to girls. That never happened, bro. <laughs> Not a thing. That is about as bullshit as when epics were epic in World of Warcraft. That was, like, not a thing <laughs> at all. For, like, that existed for, like, four months at the start of Vanilla World of Warcraft. That was it. Like, it's just not a thing, okay? <clears throat> we were all kids. This is a kid's game. What's more, my character had a woman's name because, again, all about that RP, you know? All about that RP. My suspicions were confirmed when Aegis logged on, saw me online, and immediately asked if anyone else wanted to join me and her for some sailing that she would be on the wheel. This dude clearly thought I was a girl and was looking for some of that piratey poon. <laughs> the guild leader was a woman named Lerbic, and she was always very plainly referenced her gender when she spoke in guild chat, saying stuff like, me and the gals and girls night out, etc, etc. When Aegis started excitedly trying to get me back on his ship, Lerbic spoke up on guild chat. Stop trying to fuck every girl who plays this game, Aegis. You've been doing it all week. I mean, that's that's just... Well, why are you not being a wingman? Lerbic? Where's the wingman at? I then got a whisper from her directly. Don't worry about him. You don't have to do what he says. He's just, he's just like that sometimes. I know that it hadn't directly come up, but at this point I probably should have disclosed the fact that I was a guy. But my sailing skill was going up really fast. <laughs> and I... <laughs> And I, of course. And I really did want that war frigate. So. So I did the thing. I did the thing. My reply to Lerbic. Thanks for the heads up. I guess us girls have to stick together. Thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, you loser. Feeling guilty, but only a little bit. I spent a few hours on Aegis' ship blasting NPCs, getting skill levels and sinking in between because my passives didn't give me high defense. If I had to guess, he probably spent a week's worth of grinding in gold repairing his ship for me and giving me compliments. By the next day, I'd done it though. My sailing skill had maxed and I could buy the war frigate I really wanted. <clears throat> the next day, Aegis invited me to go on his ship again so we could go on adventures. I said no. <laughs> He asked what's up and why I don't want to sail anymore. Oh, it's okay. I've capped my character. I don't need the XP. So, uh, I'm just not in the mood now. Smiley face. <laughs> I replied. <laughs> you seem pissed off. What? what? No, clearly not. Were you just using me for sailing levels? He said. I should know that this was all a guild chat and Lerbic spoke up. Spoke up. <clears throat> she could do whatever she wants. Leave her alone and let her play the game. But Aegis wasn't having any of it. This is bullshit. Oh no, we're going full incel. Oh no. 
This is bullshit. I should have known. Women are all the same. And this is why guys like me who just try to help never get the woman. <clears throat> Lurvik was getting annoyed. Is, don't you hate it? Honestly, I find the same. Girls only want me for my sailing levels. And it's just, they only want one thing. Sad it is. It's really sad. It's all they want me for. <clears throat> Lurvik was getting annoyed. And I just sat and watched the guild chat erupt. I'll skip the details, but Aegis had called the rest of the guilds. <laughs> of course. Feminist cooks. <laughs> called Lurvik a bitch. And called me a snack before he finally got kicked. I mean, he certainly went overboard and was clearly harboring some deep-seated problems. But he wasn't wrong about me lying, to be fair. I did use him. <laughs> Lurvig asked me if I was okay and apologized for ever letting a dick like that into the guild. I said it was fine. And thank you for the help. I know, and you guys know, I was a bit of a dick. I still feel a little bit of guilt, but I also have a war frigate. So, I mean, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed my little pirate story, and may you all have a drama-free day. I'm kind of down with checking out the pirate game. We can give it a day. Yo ho a bottle of rum? I'm kind of in. I'm kind of in. I am. I'm totally, I'm totally kind of want to check that out. I think we can get a day out of that. Especially if it's free. That sounds pretty good. <clears throat> I'm, are you down, Bex? We got a little Discord going. We'll all throw ourselves into pirate game for a day. Oh, that's not the right button. Hello. Oh, welcome back, everybody. It's drama time. Uh, all right, let's... Okay, this sounds like super edgy. Is this like the edgiest story we've ever had, Bex? Because this sounds so edgy. The title. <clears throat> the title of this story. The Rogue Solitude. Here I sit in my cave, waiting. Waiting for the day when I can show myself again. When once more I can gaze into the sunlight. But that is not today. Today I live in the shadows, waiting. All right. I predict edginess. <laughs> Dear Mike in the chat, let's go back. 2007. The Burning Crusade is launched this week, and I wish to tell you a story of my time all the way back then. And although it isn't filled with massive drama, I recently had a very refreshing experience accompanied by hard, hard emotions. No! And then the camera died? What is today? Right? What is today? Today is a day, isn't it? Today is a day. I'm just having one of those days, bum bum. And why did the camera die? Because it overheated. Why did it overheat? Because it's 500 degrees in here and we've been streaming all day. But I can fix it because I am Superman. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, work. Hello. Hi, stream. You guys are awesome. Uh... I can do this. Bear with me. We're going to be blurry, but whatever, right? Guys. Show doesn't really work without the camera on. That would be crazy. Do that and that. This. <sighs> doesn't have focus. What? Why don't you have focus? <sighs> I'm too warm. Coming up. Hello. How's it going? It's me, out of focus Mike. Good to see you. Always a friendly sort. And we'll do that. And we'll do this. I uh, will do. I'm so zoomed in, it's crazy. We're on a webcam. Why? You might ask. It's a good question. I don't know. What it'll do. It'll do. Because I'm roasting. And. Whoa. Hey, it's like it's not even changed. <laughs> It's like it's exactly the same. 
<laughs> I can't change the focus. <laughs> it's really 2007. I'm taking us back to the TBC times. I don't even have a shoulder. Do I have a shoulder now? No. I kind of have a shoulder. Wow. It's it's almost entirely accurate. I'm sure we just need the camera to cool down. Let me zoom out a bit. A little smaller. There we go. Full immersion. Awesome. Just so good. And they say I can't. It's say, they say we can't fix it, right? They say we can't fix it on our webcam. <laughs> Do I have... Uh, this is terrible. Hold on. My Logitech G-Hub is going to fix it. G-Unit. There we go. Uh, fix. Auto. 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 Make auto. I can't change it. Because it's using it now. But we're, we're stuck here. Yeah, this is, this is our life now. From now until the end of time. Yeah, none of the, all the options are grayed out. Great. Can I fix this? Hold on. Deactivate. Can't fucking bother. Got a remote. That'll do. That'll do. Whatever. We'll be fine. Low tech support. Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> our normal camera will cool down in a sec. Uh, dear Mike and chat, we're going back to 2007. <clears throat> I recently had a very refreshing experience accompanied by hard emotions that I consider the absolute dramatic peak of my journey. I was in high school, a fan of the Warcraft universe, but couldn't afford the world of Warcraft. A friend who had played it for a short time suggested to check out a private server and give it a whirl. From the beginning, I wanted to play something mobile, lightweight, that excelled in damage and survival. I've been playing a lot of Prince of Persia, especially, uh, win ooh, WW? Uh, which even today is one of my favorite video games of all time. Prince of Persia, WW. And though the titular character was identified as a warrior, I've always looked at him as the swift, sneaky, dagger-wielding professional. Warrior within. Professional... I only ever remember Sands of Time. Uh, professional killing machine. And the light bulb flashed. A rogue! I was in love with the idea instantly. I learned herbalism and alchemy because thematically they just fit the whole rogue poison fantasy back when poison was basically made a whole profession of its own. My rogue turned out to be an excellent choice for one more reason. I've been shy and introverted no matter how much I've played MMO, uh, enjoyed the general MMO vibe in the game. I found it way less stressful to play without the burden of committing to other people. I pugged some dungeons, completed elite quests with random players around, did BGs, a bit of, uh, got myself some purple gear, but that was it. No guild, no raiding, no friends. A lone wolf. It was just me and my rogue. It was perfect. I was the absolute definition of the solo casual player. I read, of course, a lot about the game. The lore, the world. But I had no idea about the real end content or the various game mechanics and systems like attunements, currencies, boss fights. Raiding especially seemed like a whole different universe, accessible only to super gods exclusively. I just leveled via zone quests and spent more and more time admiring the landscape and the music. It took me years to get really addicted to the game, but from day one, I knew I had become part of something truly special. Owing to the game's immersive atmosphere and the people around me who I never talked to, but had these things in common with. I didn't do alts. And I never developed a horde alliance identity or affection to any race. My rogue was me. I was my own faction. My own team. My own army. I needed nothing else. Often, I spent hours traveling around to enjoy the view and the ambience World of Warcraft offered. At level 18, I swam down from Darkshore without a specific destination. And upon reaching the shores of Desolus, decided to walk back on mainland. The terror of instantly being chased by mobs 15 levels higher is tangible and thrilling still today. I did the walk nevertheless while getting killed a dozen times and it was totally worth it. I played on an RP PvP server, so every time I left Booty Bay questing, I got nuked by players from the opposing faction. It was frustrating and hilarious, and the zone chat was exploding. This just made every single mob kill and quest completion sweeter and more rewarding. Soon the magnificent day to pass the dark portal arrived. I will never forget seeing Outland for that first time. 
It was the most unfriendly, horrifying wasteland I'd ever seen with an army of hostile demons greeting me at the stairs in front of the portal. And yet, I never felt so much like being at home. I didn't pursue any gameplay beyond exploring zones, doing quests in some dungeons. I didn't need to. I had my rogue, and my own rogue's world to discover. The dungeons were amazing, and my dearest memories still today are questing in the fantastic zones of Hellfire Peninsula and Zanga Marsh. Nobody likes leveling in Zanga Marsh, bro. What the fuck? Zanga Marsh? Who levels in Zanga Marsh? <laughs> no. Whoosh. As if by magic. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> nice to see you. All good. <clears throat> Content was implemented slowly on this private server. So often, I often took breaks for a few months. And this went on for years until ex all expansions like Mists of Pandaria. Despite obvious flaws in game design and the end content I missed out on, I slowly cleared some old content raids, and especially TBC raids had a massive impact on me. The server started to lag behind. No content after Pandaria ever got deployed. Now for seven years. You played Mr. Pandaria for seven years? Despite all that, the server still had an active 3 to 4k player base. Even today, I just checked, which I think is admirable. Years passed. My girlfriend and I moved together and got married. I became more extroverted, less anxious about people in general. I started to become a better person. I got a job and I was successful in it and made great friendships there. I played less frequently, but I still had this constant feeling in the back of my brain that there is this whole other universe that I belong to. And then time to time, I would log in and become my rogue once more. Around late Legion in retail, I got hired into a new team of three at work. The other two members were WoW veterans who had stopped playing at Mr. Pandaria Wars of Draenor. We became friends while having extremely long chats about WoW all the time. They didn't want to play again, but told me I should buy the actual game and subscribe if I want to know what the reality of World of Warcraft is. The peak of the game. The realm I picked was Hellfire. I just couldn't imagine a more appropriate choice. It fit my rogue perfectly. <laughs> I'm a rogue. I'm Hellfire. <laughs> I did some trial characters to have a taste of other classes. Move out of my comfort zone. But I just terribly missed that rogue. I subscribed, created a blood elf rogue. Of course you did. Learned herbalism and alchemy and began my journey. I preferred sub over the other specs, and it never bothered me that it was a PvP spec. As a casual, I had low targets. Get Pathfinder in Warlords of Draenor and Legion, which not needed not much effort beyond my normal gameplay. Some extra time, perhaps. Then I bought the game to play Battle for Azeroth, and I made the decision. It was time to spread my wings and fly. I joined a social guild. They seemed the most opportune people to start playing with. I did low-level Mythic Plus keys, raised a few alts to max level, but still, I mostly played as a solo casual with my rogue. Being a casual has the luxury of not being exposed to shitty game mechanics. Do you mean hard ones? Is that what you mean by shitty? Is that what that means? Shitty game mechanics. I won't be popular. This made me love Warlords of Draenor and Battle for Azeroth. At least I didn't like them more than most other expansions. I mean, sure. <laughs> so you really liked Apex's crystals? Huh. Well, there it is. There it is. Objectively, sure, they were somewhat messed up. But what was good about them was the really, really, was really stunning. And I didn't care about the rest. I was playing a lot and enjoyed it all. I didn't pursue the vast amount of old achievements offered by the game. I did a lot of them anyway on the private server, but I did farm the Vile of the Sands alchemy recipe, which I consider my greatest achievement ever. I didn't do it to make gold, but to experience something that was probably less that probably less players did than clearing Nax 40 in vanilla. Fully enough, the recipe isn't an achievement, but having the mount cheap from the AH is. It was one of my proudest moments because there were no real shortcuts to it and based on RNG it could take 2 to 100 hours. It redefined barrier of entry. 
I knew it absolutely made no sense. All right, okay. <laughs> I know it makes no sense, even by WoW Insanity standards, but I felt it so good. That's fine. No, that's fine. If you enjoyed it, that's totally fine. I get it. If you loved it, that's good. I started to follow streamers. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no. I started to follow streamers and by Shadowlands beta testing, I became hyped to play the game properly this time. In spite of the ominous signs of issues. From pre-patch onwards, I played hours every day. I got my Bis Lego extremely quick. I pugged layer 8 of the twisting corridors and against all odds, we killed the emboss on floor 18 just three seconds before the Tara grew kicked our asses. And I never returned to the twisting corridors again. Same. I will not forget that boss kill ever. I cleared LFR and normal Castle Nathria quickly. I decided to get curved just this time to experience once in my life what it felt like clearing a heroic raid. It was absolutely awful. <laughs> my new guild even through a heroic pros prog uh, my new guild even though a heroic progress group got stuck after the Stone Legion generals and only a few a few core members in the guild wanted to raid, but they didn't pursue it too much. And they were long-time close friends who seemed to have disregarded new joiners. They offered no help to newbies in clearing low keys and advised to pug or similar than waste their time. They were fine on their own, apparently. So I gave up on them and dove headfirst into pug hell. I spent two months waiting for invites to heroic sire groups in vain after, or being kicked of them, out of them for low DPS after wiping in phase one due to people messing up their soul corder. Sub Rogue is probably the least desired spec in raids currently. Ooh, I don't know about that. Oh, that's a bold statement. It's pretty low, though. <laughs> I was usually in the bottom 40% of the DPS meters, but I knew the fight. And soon I became everything I had grown to hate. An elitist. Whenever we fail... You, you're an elitist sub-rogue in the pug world? That's fucked up, man. That's fucked up. That's some twisted shit, that is. That's really, that's, that's some twisted ass shit. You're an elitist pugging sub rogue. That's fucking messed up. That's, that's really fucked. That's fucked. Whenever we failed easy mechanics, I felt rage. If someone pulled low DPS card, I started a rant. Eventually though, I got my curve and I was happy about it. But it felt different. Rather than relief, it, rather it felt like relief than happiness. I pretty much stopped raiding immediately and started to look for something else. I max leveled my alts and started goblining. <laughs> I have always been short on gold, but in two months I made profit. I actually max leveled another sub rogue just to increase my gathering efficiency while playing my beloved spec. Are you multiboxing sub rogues? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Please tell me that's not what you're saying. You multiboxing sub rogues? That's fucking messed up, man. Oh, Jesus, fuck. Uh, and then for the first time in 14 years, I burned out. Not because of raiding. Not because of Torghast. Not because of being a goblin. But because of fucking everything. All of it. I achieved more or less everything I was looking for in WoW. I even managed after years to put together the perfect transmog. Something unlike I've seen on any other character. It better be a screenshot in here. Which fit my rogue fantasy perfectly. Doing anything else just felt terribly competitive for me, which was far from any kind of fun I used to have. Playing the game was no longer fun. Rather, it became a set of repetible, repeatable chores. 9.1 doesn't excite me much, and I don't want to waste years clearing old achievements that mattered 5 to 10 years ago. And the worst part? In these couple of years, I became more and more distant from my real life, my wife, my friends, and more importantly, my dogs. You ignored your dogs for WoW? Bruh. Bruh. The small house with a garden we purchased a year and a half ago where we would just sit down and relax after every work day. I knew for a while that, that WoW had to go. It had to go. I just have so many things in my life I should care about more and the feeling of needing to get away became more apparent than ever. You might want to ask, why are you telling me this? A lot of players experience this. What's the deal? Well, there is of course a huge deal. A massive problem. The Burning Crusade Classic. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. On the one hand, my life's drifting away from me. On this side of the coin, my life is drifting away from me. On this side, though, there's the Burning Crusade Classic. So, I mean, where's the scales of life on this one? The Burning Crusade... 
my first dearest wow experience the place where i felt home for the first time in wow just me and my rogue and the whole world to discover i didn't realize initially but this was meant to be it was meant to be the end of my journey this is where i started and this this is where i should finish no it's just a game log off it's fine totally fine stop making it so dramatic you make it sound like you're on a mountaintop and having wolves at your door and you've got to sacrifice yourself to the gods you don't it's tbc it's totally fine dude it's gonna be there for like two years easy it's too dramatic you rogue you're such a rogue everything you do is something fresh out of a 300 movie it's crazy it's just the burning crusade stop ruining his moment no go and see to your dogs dogs first then wife in that order okay get it squared away i want to pursue content beyond the casual oh you're going hardcore okay you're going hardcore okay it says here i want to pursue content beyond the casual not a super hardcore i honestly don't want to get war glaives yeah yeah okay all them rogues playing the burning crusade who don't want the war glaives you're that guy are you i won't i promise i won't invest more than three to four months <laughs> it's just a four month commitment that's it three maybe four months <laughs> most absurd shit i've ever read oh my god i promise not to give you three four months <clears throat> But maybe, just maybe, I can enter Karazhan. Yeah, I think you'll be fine. Which I consider one of the best raids ever created owing to its unique atmosphere. Anything beyond that would just be a cherry on top. I wanted to convince those two friends from work to come back to the Burning Crusade, but they don't want to spoil their memories, which is understandable. I was reluctant to start from scratch, committing to a whole new community experience where old friends share ancient memories of playing together until 4am every night, or who wants to heavily progress the game until the end of the sun well, and me being a semi-outcast. I had a fear of chasing something I should have had back when it was actually a thing, and now 14 years later experiencing it would be a disappointment. I, I decided to get help from Reddit? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> hopefully hopefully a, a website designed entirely around echo chambers would will provide me sound advice <laughs> right i have no issue with reddit i enjoy reddit but let's not go there for advice right <laughs> let's not do that that's crazy let's not do that i made a post about these struggles to reddit and everybody told me to just give it a try <laughs> give it a try one What's a little try gonna do? Just give it an hour. Fine. Go on, just taste it. Just taste, just stick that needle in your arm. Just stick it in your arm, all right? If you don't like it, you don't need to do it again. Just go on, go on, go on. <sighs> the decision was made. I will pass the dark portal once again. Provided I can log and no server crash. And after a few months, just let it go for good. I feel like this is like an alcoholic anonymous meeting or something. I'm, I'm, I'm like your co-sponsor or something. Stop. Stop. Don't write me a story where your life's falling apart. And now you're like, well, Reddit told me to play WoW as your excuse. Like, what the fuck is that? Don't give me that. My wife, who never played the game and never understood it, asked me why I do that if WoW means so much to me. Why would you ever give it up? I tried to explain. I'm not sure she understood, but she supports me. And that's what matters. Upon this, I logged into Shadowlands one last time. I completed some unfinished quests and adventures from the mission tables on my main and my alts too. You don't need to log into that, dude. Just do it on your phone. I sold everything I have on the auction house. I revisited the most memorable and favorite zones I've been in to take screenshots. I have two whale sharks on the picture taken in Vashir, which made me chuckle. I print screened myself in Tiragard Sound at the waning glacier flight point. Standing next to the penguin in love with a, cart a cartoon flamingo. A jewel from BFA. I went to Crasserang Wilds next to the waterfall from the Valley of the Four Winds, where players were still fishing. <laughs> Accompanied with that wonderful sad music, it almost made me cry. 
I went to Booty Bay, Wrath of the Lich King Dalaran, the Eversong Woods in front of Silvermoon, Suramar and the Spires of Iraq. The Spires of Iraq? Ew, what? Vomit? What the fuck? Spires of Iraq? <laughs> to revisit all those wonderful places once more. I was really happy to have at least one screenshot from each expansion. From Shadowlands, I have two really special screenshots. The first is Sarah Wright's companion, Flocky, which is the same name my wife's old dog had years ago, before he started ignoring it. The other one taken three months ago, me rolling a 99 on a drop I wanted from the Hungering Destroyer. <laughs> just, so another player, just so another player would roll a 100 and then the entire raid chat would break down in laughter, including myself and everyone taking screenshots. And then one last thing. I couldn't just log off like that. I wanted to log off in a special way. I flew over Stormwind and slowly sneaked in front of the auction house. I unstealth and repeatedly spammed a macro I prepared a few minutes earlier to yell, Goodbye Azeroth, thanks for the wonderful 14 years. Even though probably no one understood, then took a screenshot while the guards started to kill me. <laughs> it's so dramatic. Miss Dana, the schoolmistress NPC, just walked into the picture with a bunch of school kids while Tommy Miller, the baker, shouted, I think, freshly baked bread for sale. Which just made my suicide ritual. <laughs> Imagine being the edgier brother than Batman. Batman's edgier younger brother. <laughs> my suicide ritual. More <laughs> absurd. I hit invasion to last long enough for the Alliance players to gather around and witness with bemusement. <sighs> when I died, I took one last screenshot. I didn't release, just left my corpse in front of the auction house. I exited and uninstalled the game and made sure to copy those screenshots to safe places so I don't lose them. I will never forget any moments of this fantastic journey. While I type these words, I am starting to cry. Dude, what are you doing? Stop! I made a business out of this game. I ain't crying. The fuck? <laughs> Stop it. I know it's ridiculous. I'm an adult. I should actually do my work at the moment and call the Masons to discuss our bathroom's reconstruction starting next week. And instead, I'm bitching over WoW and my rogue character. <laughs> but they were just so kind to my heart half my entire life and helped me through such difficulties that they meant everything to me for a long time. Let's be honest. I'll probably subscribe later on. Yeah, that's what we're all thinking here. You're probably just going to log in next expansion or whatever. But I know it just won't be the same. I stopped playing WoW in the past many times, but never before did it feel like breaking up with someone rather than burying a dead friend. This time it was real. Next week, Outland will be mine to explore once more. I took a few days off work. Oh no. I will play until early morning every single day. No! Uh, no! The dogs and the wife and the house and the, the, the new bathroom. The missus didn't say a word about that part, although I saw in her face that she questioned my sanity, but she understood. She doesn't understand. My wife doesn't understand. You get it? She doesn't. She doesn't get it at all. She, pff, she's no idea. Uh, she knows this is going to be therapeutic to me. It possibly won't be the same, but there is still a good chance that I'll have a great time playing the Burning Crusade again. One last time. Thank you for reading my story, and I'll see all of you beyond the dark pool. I think you made us all not want to play the Shadow, uh, to play the Burning Crusade. I mean, I wasn't playing anyway, but I feel like none of us want to play now. <laughs> you made us all really sad. <laughs> I feel like you put us off. <laughs> Your wife also questions your sanity. Oh, she does. She totally does. I'm physically going. Oh, man. It was so dramatic. That's but fair enough. Each to their own, my man. Each to their own. Each to their own. Just you better take care of those doggies and that wife of yours, all right? You better take care of them. I'm uninstalling the Burning Crusade as we speak. <laughs> I'm uninstalling now. Well, after one of the scuffiest dramas we've had in probably over a year or something like that. It does conclude, my friends. It does conclude. It is a roasting hot day. The cameras have overheated. The Twitch servers have had a meltdown. But that's all good, man. That's all good. I am going to go and see... Uh, I'm actually... I'm going to the gym, actually. Because I've got a babysitter this afternoon. But all of you, have a great weekend. Be good. I love you all, man. And next week, guess what? The madness starts again. We're looking at a crazy cat leader, lady and saving him a win next week. It's going to be a busy week. Be awesome. I'll see you again. Bye, everybody. <laughs>